Hello and welcome to Edupedia World. In this video, will we be taking a look at how you can change whatever is on your TV. So, um, I just shot some footage of a TV and I changed whatever was on the screen. So, if we just hide the layer uh, with the screen element, then you can see this is the footage that I shot. And uh, there's nothing on the screen. But if I turn on the screen layer, you can see suddenly there's something on the screen. And Hocus Pocus, if we go into this other composition called Screen, then we can just change whatever we want on the screen. So we can do Control T. Hello. Make this very large, like this. And when we are back in our other composition, you can see there's something new on the screen. It says hello. So, um, how did we do this? How did I do this? Well, I started off with a 3D track and then I added a plane on the screen and changed whatever was on the plane. So, um, I will show you how you can do that. First, you need to start off with some footage. And uh, this is the footage that I'll be working with. So, drop it onto the new composition button and keep it organized. So, call it footage. There we go. Let's just. I think this is fine to work with. So, um, remember, I told you that I will show you how you can um, get a better track. So, um, as you can see, this video actually doesn't have that much uh, to track. There's a big white wall right here, and it's not going to be able to track anything of all the white. Also, this lamp won't be able to track any of that. Won't be able to track much of the floor, much of this table, much of this uh, black sofa. And uh, there's basically just not much for the tracker to track. Also, the screen here, it's it's reflecting stuff and uh, those reflections they can be tracked but they are actually pretty hard so uh, this is actually a not that easy shot to track and uh, you also see that with the average error that we will get so um, since the tracker is looking at different points small points uh, with a lot of contrast um, we can actually increase the contrast um, in the image to make it easier for the tracker to pick out points. So we can do that by adding adding a, an effect before we do the tracking. So we can take this effect called sharpen and then just add it onto the layer and just crank that up. You can see well, if I crank it up to a thousand then it gets very uh, outlined and stuff. But if you just put it to something like let's say 90 then it just makes it so that everything is more pronounced. There's a lot of contrast. You can either turn it off. You get a lot of contrast. Dark lines around edges. And uh, this is just much nicer for the tracker to work with. So uh, in order for the tracker to actually use these settings, we have to make this into a composition because it won't take these uh, effects into account. So I'll take our layer, do Control shift c and then move all the uh, attributes and uh, this will create a new composition with this video uh, with all these layers put together as the video so we're now in that composition and um, as you can see we now have this composition called footage we can right click and choose track camera because this is how you do a 3d track we will set it to detailed anal analysis and actually just leave everything else at default so again it will analyze in the background and uh, in about 30 seconds very quickly it will be ready you gotta of course imagine if you had a very long shot in like 4k or something it would take a long time so then you should probably um, while it's uh, tracking you should probably go watch some some movies maybe go watch a new chapter on Edupedia world I don't know do whatever you like go make yourself some coffee 
um, in my case it's done right now it will quickly stall the camera and as you can see we have an average error of around 1.5 and um, that was actually to be expected because uh, this was a very hard shot to track for some weird reason all these points didn't want to show up when I tracked uh, the video so I am very sure that it was a bug in After Effects and what I did to correct it was just uh, delete the composition go to the project find the, the, the project and then just deleted it I'll call this um, I'll just give it a name screen so I just deleted the composition and now I'm in a new composition so all the all that I've done is just edit in the video oh sorry the footage or whatever you want to call it and then just right click and uh, told it to track the video I didn't do any sharpening um, because I just wanted to be very simple uh, to eliminate any box that could be in After Effects so um, now we can see we have an average error of 1.38 that's actually better than without sharpening and with sharpening sorry so um, we can see we have a lot of points we want to just pick the points that are on the TV on the right plane you can see all the guys that are in the plane sorry in the TV they won't actually be um, they won't actually be on this plane they will be somewhere behind the TV like out in the garden that's behind this TV because as you can see the reflections of this chair or the chair that's over here is showing like it's behind the TV like it's another room in behind the TV and that's how the tracker will perceive it as something that's behind the TV like we are looking through the TV but we're not uh, this is actually just a plane um, so I want to pick points that are like besides the TV on the TV like this guy up here and these are here you can hold shift and you can uh, select multiple multiple uh, points just select some of these and as you can see now we have a uh, oh sorry can't do uh, we can't move the cursor and we can't do control C but if I just select these points again we will see that we have a uh, oh, oh I did it again always forgets that you can always forget that you can't control C so I'll just select these points this point up here maybe deselect some of these Let's do select some more points we want it to be as flat uh, as possible as you can see this is much better just select some great points and then you'll see this um, target is on the TV like in the right plane so we can now right click and uh, create a solid and the camera that we need so um, I'll change the opacity of this so that it's easier to place so right now if we scrub through the video then we'll see our plane is tracked onto the uh, onto the onto the um, television and it's in in the right uh, depth like it's it's in the right uh, it's the right distance from the screen so now we just need to position it so that it's on the TV um, but first we need to change the dimensions of this plane because if we take this call it screen and then go into the layer and the solid settings for the screen then we will see the width has been set to 1080 and the height has been set to 1080 but this uh, television is actually not one by one aspect ratio it's 16 by 9 so I'll just type in 1920 which is full HD and as you can see it's now the right dimensions uh, like the um, television so this pink color is actually pretty nice when you need to align this 
because it's easy to see where uh, where the box, oh, sorry, this plane is. So I'll just start moving it around, looking from all different angles, seeing if I've put it off axis, and I have. So I'll just move it forward a bit. I'll actually undo all of this. And first, before I do anything, start by getting it in roughly the correct rotation. So try and line up the green line with the line of the TV. And then when that's done, use the x-axis to try and line up the blue. Basically if this uh, green line lines up with this line um, and uh, the line at the bottom lines up with the television then you should be good. So that's done by rotating this way. And then uh, I think we're in the right perspective. Press V to start moving it around. And uh, we can place it inside the television like this. Now we can do some fine adjustments to uh, the C axis, the blue axis. And uh, we may want to change the scale, just scale it down just a very bit, just a little bit like that. And uh, now it fits in the frame quite all right. We can move through the video and see how it how it is in the end. In the end, we can actually see that the x-axis hasn't been aligned perfectly. So I will just try and align it like that. there we go um, as we can see right in this frame uh, it looks quite alright it fits pretty alright into the frame you may want to scale up to maybe 99 maybe 100 like that um, so it looks alright here but then when we get to the side it's all uh, it's not right so we will have to create some uh, keyframes to move it around and it's a bit uh, I won't call it cheating but it's not it would be best if it would fit uh, off the bat but uh, since this is a very hard track because of the lack of um, uh, information to track then we are gonna have to do this so I'll just put in a few keyframes just move along see when uh, when it goes off and uh, and just like change it so that fits so press U to see all the keyframes and when we get to the side so you would actually have to change the scale as well um, put, it, put it to non-uniform and uh, then we can just take one axis at a time maybe take this in a bit move it over like that go to the start and then put this to 100 and go to the last frame where it's off by a lot and just make it fit and then uh, the program will do the rest for us And uh, this should actually do it now. Now this uh, fits the, the screen pretty all right. I'll just turn off the audio. And as you can see, this this follows the screen nicely. It, th this actually follows the screen nicer than in my example. So it's pretty good. We now want to um, 
actually put something on the screen. So uh, to do that, we need to pre-compose it, put it into another uh, composition where we can change what's on it. So I'll call this screen image. And then instead of saying move all attributes, we want to leave them all. So we don't get this um, layer with the 3D position. We only want like the solid. So you can see what that does. Let's create a composition. If we go into the composition, then we will see uh, just the solid right here. If we scale it down, then it will also be scaled in here. So that's quite nice. Then I will find uh, the stuff we want to add onto the uh, onto the screen. So I'll just pick one of my uh, other lessons. Go to an interesting point here. I have added some color. Set the in point and uh, go back to the composition and just add it in. And there we go. If we go into in our other composition, you can see that uh, the tutorial has now been added onto the onto the screen. And remember, I changed the opacity, so it's a 56. If we put it to 100%, then you'll see it actually looks kind of fake because of the large amount of sharpness. Because, um, as you can see, everything is a bit, uh, it's a bit um, blurred. It's not all sharp, and as you can see, you can. There's a lot of detail in this uh, in the screen, and uh, that doesn't very look very uh, realistic. And also, there's no reflection. So if you if you just hide this layer, then you can see there's a lot of reflections, and we don't get those. So let's first uh, fix the problem with uh, the reflections. It's actually very easy. Just change the blending mode from normal to screen. That will add in all the reflection reflections. As you can see now, they are just being added on top. And then uh, to make it all look a bit more blurred, we'll just add a fast blur, where it's like two pixels or something, maybe five. And there we go. We are now done. We've used 3D tracking to replace the screen on a television. And in my opinion, this is seamless. This is pretty much how it would look in real life if you had something on the television. Of course it wouldn't flicker like it does when you record TVs, so this is a very nice way of uh, putting stuff on televisions. So that's about it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching Ethiopedia World. Stay tuned for more videos.